It's Wednesday, August 16, 2017. Our panelists today, Jonathan Breckenridge, he's an aerospace engineer, and John Meredith joins us as well. He is a political consultant. We've got a lot to talk about uh, with these guys. I'm Dale Jackson. You're watching Yellowhammer TV Live. Welcome to Yellowhammer TV Live. Today we'll talk about that Alabama Senate race. Was it a surprise or was it what you expected? Donald Trump doubles down on Charlottesville, Virginia, and the terrorist attack that happened there. Parker Griffith is running for governor, so we've got a lot to talk about today. So let's go ahead and get right to it. Let's get to the headlines. Gentlemen, the race for Senate in Alabama is over in one regard, but just getting started in another. Doug Jones won the Democratic side rather handily. Um, he got the endorsement of Joe Biden. He got the endorsement of Terry Sewell, uh, the Democratic establishment, but there was no attention or money spent in that race. Um, he may be a formidable opponent or may not. We'll get into that here in just a little bit, <laughs> but let's first talk about the Republican side. I think this is where the money is and where all the attention and the results are in. Judge Roy Moore, almost 40 percent. Luther Strange, almost 30 percent or a little over 30 percent. <laughs> and then Congressman Mo Brooks with 20 percent. John, any surprises here or was this an inevitable thing with all the money being spent and Roy Moore basically coasting uh, through a contentious primary season? Well, um, the runoff, uh, and these two being in the runoff, was um, something to be expected. However, um, most uh, odds makers would have put uh, Luther Strange coming in first. Uh, I think it's very significant uh, that he didn't. It shows that uh, Mitch McConnell's uh, deep pockets and the endorsement of President Trump did not necessarily uh, carry the day like they thought. Um, Judge Moore winning and winning somewhat strongly, uh, I think, indicates that uh, Alabamians are more interested in their own destiny and predicting their own destiny rather than having it imposed on them. Uh, by I agree. I agree with that completely. We're going to talk a little bit about what happens in the, in the next round here. Uh, yesterday, you had Mike Pence come out and uh, endorse uh, uh, Luther Strange yes. uh, as well. That shows me that they were at least a little bit worried about this to, to kind of hold that back until the day of. Uh, but Roy Moore comes riding in on his horse. Uh, <laughs> he was, was suffered a few attacks. Uh, from Luther Strange, but not that many. Uh, I think Roy Moore, with the super low turnout, they proved one thing, Jonathan, and that's his voters are going to show up no matter what. They're coming. Yeah, it, I think a voter turnout for the state of Alabama was right around 10%. Yeah. And, and it, I think that that's, that's abysmal. A, is how that's, the that's a State travesty. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is. Because you've got. This election that just happened picks our next, our, our next senator, right? I mean, it it puts the two, puts the two together now, and with uh, Moore and Strange, the it's if if the same number of people show up, Moore wins hands down. Yeah, uh, it, it, there's just no other way around it. If their same people just show up, the people that voted for them voted for them. Let's say the the Brooks Pittman. All the other folks, they just stay away. The, all the people. It's not going to happen. But if they just stay away, uh, then you're right. I mean, there's no question about it. Morse folks will show up in, in a in a low turnout election. Uh, their uh, their position is strengthened big time because they're going to show up every single time. And that and that's that's what happened here, right, John? Absolutely. Um, and to further what you were you were saying about um, the runoff election. Most of those other votes are more than likely going to wind up in uh, the judge's uh, column rather than Luther Strange's Yeah, we're going to get into all of that uh, in a little bit later in depth. We'll talk about what happens uh, moving forward. Uh, moving on to the next subject, though, uh, Donald Trump doubles down. First, he came out after this terrorist attack in Charlottesville and basically said, hey, look, both sides 
uh, have a little bit to blame here. Uh, gave a little more nuanced statement a, a, a day later, and now he's right back to uh, it was both sides. Now, this is what I take from this situation, and I, and I went and I looked at what he said, and it is worth noting, here's how he said it. Okay, what about the alt-left? They came charging in. Excuse me. What about the alt-left? They came charging uh, at the, as you say, the alt-right. Do they have any semblance of guilt? Let me ask you this. What about the fact that they came charging, and they came charging with clubs in their hands, swinging clubs? Do they have any problem? I think they do. Okay. I think what Donald Trump is saying here, personally, has a lot of merit. I, I think that they, both sides showed up spoiling for a fight. But, yes. One side is basically saying, we are racist, the Jews will not replace us, uh, and they are semblance of the Klan and all this other stuff. The alt-right is now a racist organization. Forget about it. That's how they're going to be portrayed. Uh, and here on. John, I think Donald Trump is right in general of what he's saying is that both sides have violent entities in them. But I think what the media is saying, it doesn't matter. They're, they're saying, you will take the position that uh, it was only the alt-right and the alt-left has nothing to do with it. On CNN, when I was coming in, it was, they essentially said, hey, he, he's technically right about this, but it doesn't matter. I mean, is that, is that where we are here? Um, <clears throat> no, I, I, think, I think what the media is, is trying to uh, convey is that we, we make an exception for certain things, and self-defense is one of those things. And... The mainstream media is, is looking at the people that organized the rally, the alt-right, the neo-Nazis, the KKK, white supremacists, as hate groups, period. Yeah. So in responding to a hate group, it is all right to use force. That is what the mainstream media is saying. I do agree, in, like you do, that there is a lot of truth to what the president said on, uh, on Saturday. However, I think what America is looking for or what the mainstream media was looking for was that president to unite and console a nation rather than a president who was out to defend what he saw. And, and, and the defense of, of the alt-right here, um, I don't think that's his intention, but that's how it appears. I, I mean, Jonathan. I yeah, so I think it does come off as, as a defense of the alt-right. Um, I don't think that's what it was. So, so I've actually been thinking about this a lot, and there's, there's something referred to as horse, horseshoe theory, which is the far right and the far left, they get so far from the center that they end up coming back in on themselves. And, and I don't agree with that when it comes to ideology. I think it is linear. I think it is a, a spectrum all the way across. The problem is, is that spectrum is becoming <clears throat> logarithmic, which means that the unit of measure gets larger as you get further away from the center, right? But the, the Part of that's because we magnify it. Exactly. I mean, we're well, the, more than willing to show uh, these people on these far sides because it's a good image to watch, show people beating the crap out of each other with sticks. Right, but the one, thing, one thing I will say when it comes to horse, horseshoe theory is that the, the, the way that the, right, the far right and the far left expo it, it put out their message it does become the same. Yeah, no, so I, you've I got the alt-left and you've got the alt-right, and they are beating each other. All right, let me ask you this. Is the alt-left going to be a thing? Sean Hannity has been pushing this for a while. Donald Trump has now taken this on, uh, the Antifa, uh, the Antifa, or whatever we're calling these people. Uh, Antifa, I guess, excuse me, is the right. I want to make sure I get the, the name right here. Um, uh, they've been pushing this for a while. Is that a thing? Are we going to have that be a thing? It's going to be now, I believe. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, let's move on past that to the state of Alabama. We have laws in the state of Alabama that were recently signed that, that say if you want to take down a monument, uh, any type of monument that has been up, you've got to go through a committee in, in the Alabama legislature. Now, the legislature set this thing up, I think, to protect those uh, monuments uh, that are out throughout the state. There's one in Madison County. I mean, they're all over the place. But in Birmingham, as you see, they're starting to put um, tarps, essentially, over the monument uh, in Birmingham while they decide to do with, what to do with this. Is there any chance Alabama starts taking down these monuments? We saw in Baltimore, four came down. We saw in Durham, a mob tore down uh, a monument, which is not how we should be doing these things, um, in my opinion. But is there any chance Alabama starts taking down their monuments? 
John, sorry, you go first. There, I apologize. There, there's a small chance. I, I don't see it happening anytime soon. Um, frankly, I'm not necessarily in favor of it. Mm. I don't think that uh, insulting someone else's heritage is the, the solution. Um, frankly, that solution, outside of my purview, I, I, I don't have control over that. But um, I think we need to be sensitive to both sides of, of that equation. Um, what do you do when you take them down? Do you stick them in a museum or are they destroyed? Um, there's a lot of value to, to be said for putting in a museum and, and letting that history live. And um, there's also, I think, some value to leaving them where they are and using them as sort of a, I mean, it doesn't have to be within four walls to, to have historical significance. I mean, you can change the placards and say what it is, but that's not where we are. I mean, we are now in a place where uh, I would not be surprised if we woke up tomorrow and in Madison County they had put a rope around the neck of the, of the Confederate soldier out there and yanked it down. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised uh, to see that because, like we've said, the media is focusing on this and emboldening. In Alabama, you've got to go through a committee now. Who wants to be on that committee? I mean, I mean, that's a serious question. Who wants to? I, I jokingly said when it, when it started, I asked State Representative Ed Henry to put me on that committee. If they said, Dale, you're on that committee, I would say, pass. Pass. Yeah. Yeah. Well, nobody, wants nobody wants to be part of that. No, nobody wants to be uh, associated with it because any answer other than tear it down, crunch it into pieces, and throw it away is going to be seen as a alt-right uh, mess. Racist. Racist. It seems racist. Yeah. You know, this show will have more people watching it if I got up on the desk and kicked one of you. I mean, essentially, and, that, and, that is, and that's why we're going to see more things get torn down. I mean, you're going to see stuff like we saw in Durham uh, this week. And uh, I think that this is where we are heading in this conversation. But before we move on, I want to just think about this for a second. Yesterday, and I told you guys this off the air, uh, there were people in New York chanting around a statue of Teddy Roosevelt. And it just, to me, Trump said something else that I thought was rather interesting. He started invoking Jefferson and George Washington and their history of slave ownership. I mean, I think I read that George Washington technically was more wealthy than Donald Trump because of all the slaves he had. And so at what point, if this is the argument we're making, that Lee, uh, a guy who, yes, fought for the Confederacy, uh, but he had a history before the Confederacy, and I would say an admirable history after the Confederacy, is a demon because of the time in which he lived. And I'm not saying, you know, fighting for the Confederacy was good and all this other stuff, but we're taking 2017 narratives and putting them in, in the 1860s. Um, at what point, John, do we say, okay, this is the cutoff, <laughs> okay, we're not going back past the Civil War. Okay, fine. Teddy Roosevelt, terrible guy or whatever. I mean, how far back are we going to go? I think just to the Civil War. Um, I, I don't, I just see bringing up George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, the founding fathers, as being a deflection. I agree. Um, and and it's, it, it's kind of uncalled for. And, but it's a deflection and, with a purpose. Oh, and, yes. and, but because the deflection is a response to stuff that's actually happening. For every time that in Tennessee they say, get this Nathan Bedford Forrest bust out of the Capitol, which, amazingly, that it's still there. I mean, just his history is a little bit different than Lee's. You have a group who sits in New York and says, get Teddy Roosevelt out, out of here. I mean, he's on Mount Rushmore. What are we going to do? I mean, are we going to take dynamite to that thing and say, let's put Barack Obama there? I mean, what do we do? Well, you know, a um, state uh, legislator in Do Georgia um, is introduced a bill to get rid of Stone Mountain, the, yeah. the carvings in Stone Mountain. What are we going to do? Are you going to take dynamite to it? I mean, <laughs> is anyone in faith? So, so, so Cover it up with a tarp? So I'm not, I'm not necessarily too worried about the major monuments in D.C. I, I think those are pretty safe. And, and I think that it's very hyperbolic. Are they? To, Hold on. I, I Hold think, on. Are they safe? Because if we get a Twitter meetup where we get 1,000 people to show up with ropes and chains and they tear it down, the cops have showed they're not willing to do anything about this, which is a whole other problem. I think the... National treasures in the D.C. Mall will be much more protected than singular monuments across many different cities in the United States. Okay, all right. But what I am concerned about is when this, when all of the Confederate monuments are torn down and put into rubble, what's next? Yeah, no, that's and right. And so, so my thought is the next thing is going to be Confederate gravesites. 
and that's going to be a trap. So. Yeah, well, look, and here's another part of this before we move on here. I, I forget what year it happened, but they declared Confederate soldiers to be American soldiers. And, and that is a crazy thought in 2017. Mm -hmm. But that's what they did when they were still alive. They said, okay, we've had this skirmish. We're coming back together. Let's put the country back together. And there's an entire history of Reconstruction that... It is a flawed history, but that was one of the attempts to say these soldiers are American soldiers, they are Americans, etc. So now we're essentially tearing these things out. I know that's a technicality, but I, I have a feeling it's not going to end with the Civil War stuff. It, they will they will go pace, pace, piece by piece. And this isn't just America. Okay, I believe in South Africa, uh, I can't remember the name, but we're the Rhodes Scholar guy who spent a ton of money across the globe, did a lot of different things. At his university, They've got a cage around his statue because they keep trying to tear it down. And I think we're heading that way, and I think it's a pretty crazy thing. All right, let's move back uh, to Alabama politics, even though I guess we're already there. Parker frickin' Griffith. I mean, I say the guy's name. I have a history with him. Uh, yesterday on Twitter, uh, an account followed me, and it was Parker for Alabama. And I said, what is this? And I go and I look at it, and it all goes back to a Parker Griffith for governor page and there's a video of Parker Griffith yelling at me in my studio. John Parker Griffith, is he a legitimate player in Alabama politics? Can he be the Democratic nominee for governor? I do not think so. Um, bless his heart. Uh, I, I respect him. I like him. Um, but I don't think, particularly statewide, that he's viable at this point. Democrat, Republican, Independent, Democrat. That, that's his party history over the last 10 years. We are in a world of purity. I mean, <laughs> Roy Moore just won with 40% of the Republican vote. Um, I think we have a very big problem with people coming from party to party to party. In Alabama, you can't even do that. If you didn't vote right. in, the, in the primary, you can't vote in the runoff. Uh, and if you voted in the other primary, you can't vote in the other party's runoff. Right. So I, I, I think a lot of Democrats, by the way, are going to be surprised by that. But we'll talk about that in a second. Parker Griffith is impure. I mean, he's seen as an opportunist. He, he has run for mayor, state senate, governor, congress. I mean, he's won a couple of those seats mm -hmm. uh, along the way. Really? I mean, that's my question to you, John. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say either. I mean, it's, it, it's like it's a flashback to, what, 10 years ago? No. Is that when this Never all went stops. down? It, and it, it, it just doesn't go away. He, his last seat he won was in uh, 2008. You, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm half expecting to see uh, Wayne Parker and, and Jeff Infinger come back. <laughs> I mean, I just don't, I, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I, it doesn't I, make I, any sense. Uh, I think there is a, a, a bit of Democrats saying, what else have we got? Like, I, I think a question a lot of people ask this morning, who's Doug Jones? I, I, mean, I, I mean, I know who he is, and I know the history behind what he did. But are we really making an argument that this guy is the, the best and brightest the Democrats have right now? And I, I think that's a confusing thing. And that's where a Parker Griffith, there's a void that well, Parker that, Griffith that, can fill. That, that leads you to a discussion about the dysfunction of the Alabama Democratic yeah. Party. No, I, I completely agree. I, I completely, completely agree. When we come back, uh, we'll get into the Senate race a little bit more in depth uh, with both Jonathan Breckenridge and John Meredith. Stay tuned. You're watching Yellowhammer TV Live. Welcome back to Yellowhammer TV Live. Let's talk about this Senate race uh, that took place yesterday. There is a runoff on the Republican side. You will have former Chief Justice Roy Moore against the current incumbent, Luther Strange. Uh, John, Luther Strange, this should have been a layup for him, but it wasn't. I mean, and he's in for a dogfight uh, moving forward. He's north of 30 percent, but Roy Moore is at 40 percent. Can he close that gap? I don't, I don't think so. Uh, I think Judge Moore is going to pit the uh, country club Republican, the insider, the establishment guy against the you and me common God-fearing Alabama conservative. And I think he's going to run away with it. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. Stranger things have happened, uh, for, yeah. to a pun, I guess sure. it is. But, uh, Jonathan, let's talk about BCA money. Or not BCA, excuse me. Let's talk about the money from the PACs in D.C., Mitch McConnell, pedal to the metal. I mean, they, they, don't, oh, pull yeah. up. they don't pull up here, yeah, but what yeah. do they do to Moore? They're, they're, um, so there were some, some attacks on uh, the money 
the money that he got from the charity. Uh, I think that that's going to be an issue. Um, and I think it's just going to be massive amounts of money dumped into the state of Alabama, which, I mean, I guess you could say is a good thing for the, the media folks to <laughs> get all kinds of money for those advertisements. But at the same time, I, I don't think it's good for the, the people of Alabama. When you talk about this, you talk about the big money folks, I think you're going to see some money from Alabama coming into this too. I, I, I think that you, uh, you don't, especially the 5th Congressional District, more is not liked by the establishment. This is truly an establishment versus non-establishment uh, thing. Moore is disliked because of his the things he's done in the past, his views on gay marriage and things like that. A lot of stuff Alabama kind of wants to get past. I mean, they, they really want to move past this and have a Sessions or a Shelby who are just up there grinding away, doing the people's business, even though Sessions got a lot of heat for a lot of social uh, conservative things. Roy Moore is that on steroids. I mean, so how much... How much does this become an issue uh, of business interest in the state of Alabama? And, and I would argue in the 5th Congressional District, now that Mo Brooks is out, where do they go? Do they go to Strange, too, and, and, and they just say, we, want, we would rather have an establishment guy than Roy Moore up there throwing bombs? The business community certainly would fare a lot better uh, with Senator Strange than they would with the Senator Moore. Um, and they probably will spend their money accordingly and put their resources behind it. I just don't see that outside, if you will, influence swaying voters. Can Moore raise money? I mean, is he going to be able to raise money? I mean, I, I don't think he's going to be able to get PAC money. Obviously, we've seen how that's played. Uh, but can he, can he raise money from uh, the rural uh, counties and, and things like that to, to combat this, John? Quite, quite frankly, he can raise um, some PAC money if he really wants to. I mean, it's not I mean, establishment PAC, like big business um, money. You'd be surprised. Okay. Um, a lot of them are going to be willing to put money in both races. Um, they, they hedge bets quite often. And he can get some of that money if he wants to. He's not going to match Luther, yeah. but he can get some if he wants to. Well, and Jonathan, uh, the McConnells, the Senate Leadership Fund, they, they're already in. And they're going to have to go even in more yeah. oh, at yeah. this point, And they've got to close the gap. They've got to come at, at, at more very strong. Does it remain a Trump wants me, so you should want me to okay, argument? So the precedent's already been, it's been set. So I think they need to continue on with that, with that narrative. Um, but what, what I would be more interested in seeing, especially in North Alabama, is who do the engineering technology firms start putting their money behind? Well, I think they'll because, be strange. Because if they, I, I also think they will too. And the reason is that there's a foothold now in North Alabama with these tech companies. And these tech companies are uh, not the kinds of people who would vote for a more, mm. and and they're in order to protect the interests, interest. in, in order to protect those interests and not get inundated with outside influence such as the far left protesters, to have them remove themselves from the state of Alabama. They need to have somebody in the Senate seat within the state of Alabama that, R real quick that is more friendly to them. Real, real the other quick. thing about uh, Judge Moore, if he becomes senator, is he is not going to be a pro, as pro-business as right. he, he'll, he'll be social strange. conservative. Real quick, yes or no, does Trump come to the state in the primary? So. You don't think so, John? I don't think so. I either. think he does. I think he shows up. I think he does something for, for strange. I, I think there's a big push here. And I think McConnell's already pulled a lot of strings. I think he gets here. Let's take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll wrap up the show. We'll talk about what the biggest story of the day is. Stay tuned. Yellowhammer TV live. Let's wrap up the show by talking about what's important to us. Jonathan, what's the biggest story of the day for you? So the biggest story for me today is just another example of the far left going even further to the left. And apparently there are a lot of people who are upset about the fantasy football draft because it is a representation of white Americans buying and selling 
African Americans for their football team. You know our fantasy football drafts in about two weeks. I know. Okay, all right, all right. John, John, what's the, what's the most important story? I, I totally you? agree with that. It totally <laughs> is. I mean, how can you not think that that has anything to do with it? I, well, if that's the case, then what are the owners? I mean, what are the actual owners of these NFL teams really Titans doing? Titans of industry. Yeah. All right, John, what's your as a Republican, I hate saying it, but um, President Trump gave away the moral uh, authority of the office yesterday, and there is going to be heck to pay within the party. I think you're going to start seeing a lot of elected Republicans uh, essentially turning their backs on the president. Okay, I, I think you may be right there. The biggest story for me today is we have emboldened bad guys on both sides. I know both sides isn't a, isn't a fun thing to say. Yesterday, uh, two interesting things happened. Uh, an idiot in a Confederate uniform rolled up to the Lee statue in Charlottesville with an AR-15 on his back and got a ton of attention for it. At the same time, uh, someone wrote F law uh, on the Lincoln Memorial. We are completely spiraling out of control and we are giving attention to all the wrong people. Uh, but that's the most important thing going on today. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for watching Yellowhammer TV Live.